Hello, and welcome to my capstone presentation. My name is Morgan, and my project is on guide dogs. How many times have you seen a guide dog walking on the street and wondered, how do they know what to do? I know I have until I started researching guide dogs. I will teach you all about guide dog training and how it changed over time. Before I start, I would like you to know that there are two types of training. When the dog is a puppy, they will go to a razor family and learn basic commands. Then the dog will move on to formal training where they will learn to become a guide dog. I hope you enjoy my presentation. Let's start by talking about the history of guide dogs. Guide dogs first worked in Germany during World War I. They helped blind veterans in combat. In 1927, an American dog breeder named Dorothy Harrison wrote an article on guide dogs. Her article got put in a magazine called the Saturday Evening Post. Her article got inspired by a visually impaired man named Morris Frank. Morris decided that every visually impaired person should have their own guide dog, so he created the Seeing Eye, the first ever organization that trained guide dogs and gave them to visually impaired people. Morris and his guide dog buddy traveled all over the U.S. getting restaurants, hotels, and even small shops to allow guide dogs inside. Now guide dogs are allowed all over the globe, and the seeing eye is still open today. Now let's talk about guide dog breeds used now and how they compare to the breeds that were used years ago. The first guide dog in the world was a German Shepherd. German Shepherds used to be a very popular guide dog breed, but now Labrador Retrievers are more common. The reason some guide dog organizations stopped using German Shepherds is because they're a little hard to maintain and their temperament isn't exactly what you would look for in a guide dog, but they're still great dogs. Golden Retrievers used to, and still are, a pretty popular guide dog breed, but some organizations did not make much progress with that breed, so they stopped using them. Almost every guide dog organization uses Labrador Retrievers because they have a great temperament and love people and children. But there are other requirements to being a great guide dog. The size of the guide dog is important because the height of the dog must work with the height of the handler. A problem with finding a guide dog is that some handlers are allergic to either dandruff, saliva, or fur. In that case, a poodle will be used as a guide dog. Poodles are just as smart as labs and German shepherds. A very important part of training is knowing what technique to use. A technique that is not only used with guide dogs, but with dogs as pets is the clicker technique. The clicker technique is when a dog will get a treat whenever they hear a click. The clicker technique is a fairly new technique and study shows that the clicker technique makes lots of progress. Training dogs without the clicker could still work. When a dog is a puppy and starts training, they will get lots of lots of treats. But as they go further along in their training, they will get fewer and fewer. When the graduate or the visually impaired person is filling out their form, they also include what speed they want their dog to be at. Guiding Eyes for the Blind uses GPS trackers to get the speed of their dog. Guide dog phases are huge and help keep training organized. After a, after a dog finishes with its razor family, it will go right into training. Phase one is to teach the dog the clicker and step on curbs. The second phase is to teach the dog forward, which means to pull on the harness, telling the handler it's safe to walk. Phase three is to put everything the guide dog learned into a small town environment. Phase four is to move on to a bigger environment and learn to be aware of car traffic. Phase five is when the dog learns indoor work, like how to guide in a mall or a store. During phase five, they will also learn how to ride on the escalators. Phase six is when the guide dog will learn to work in New York City and the dog will learn how to ride in the subways. The final phase is when the dog will work a route with their trainer blindfolded. Guide dogs are placed with their graduate at two and a half years old. Their formal guide dog training is six to eight months. We already talked about the seeing eye, but now let's talk about guiding eyes for the blind. Guiding eyes for the blind opened in 1986. When they first started training guide dogs, they used boxers, which is not a commonly used breed today. In around 2003, they started using golden retrievers, Labradors, and golden lab crosses. As the year went by, they stopped using Golden Retrievers and Golden Lab Crosses because they weren't ma making much progress with them, so they stopped breeding them. Yes, they breed their own dogs and they have their own vets.
They continued using Labradors and started using German Shepherds, and they still do today. I interviewed Kate, who used to work at Guiding Eyes from 2003 to 2015. She said that one of the hardest things to teach a guide dog is to walk next to their handler on the sidewalk. She said it was easier with German Shepherds, but harder with Labradors. Sadly, these dogs at Guiding Eyes can't all, can't all be guide dogs, so they are changed. That means that they're dropped out of the program and are going up for adoption. Some reasons for career change dogs are, me- are medical reasons. The most medical problems with labs are hip and eye problems. If the dog has poor house manners, they will be dropped out of the program. Also, if the pressure to be a guide dog is too much for the dog, they will be dropped out. The dogs aren't the only ones who have to work, though. The graduate, which is the visually impaired person, needs to spend 10 to 14 days of training with their guide dog to get ready to take them home. Guiding Eyes is a great place to get a dog, and their history proves it. As you can see in this picture, Eli Manning was at the Guiding Eyes for the Blind fundraiser. Now that you know the history of guide dogs and how things changed over time, let's do a quick recap. The first guide dog organization, the Seeing Eye, opened in 1929. German Shepherds used to be a very popular guide dog breed and still are today. Labradors and Golden Retrievers came along. Guiding Eyes for the Blind is another great guide dog organization and it's a great place to adopt a puppy from. We also learned about guide dog phases and how they keep training organized. We learned about training techniques and how not all guide dogs are the same. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and it inspired you to do your own research about guide dogs. Thank you for listening.